short in the lifeline. Hold it. Just hold it. Help yourself to some more if you wanted more. I'm sure there's plenty in the pot. No, I've been eating to go on a diet after this. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Well, I'd better get away back to my work. Haven't you forgotten something, Dougal? Hmm? No, no, I don't think so. Something you should do before you go? No, oh, look, I haven't got time for anything, Mother. Wouldn't take you very long to say thank you to Morak. What for? For making your dinner. Thank you, Morag. Don't mention it, Dougal. Could have done with a bit more salt in it, mind. Mm. You ask Mother next time how she makes it. I'll be back for my tea. I am sorry, Morag. Sometimes I wonder why you put up with them at all. But you've had to put up with them a lot longer than I have. Ah, well, he is my son. But he does have his moments. No, there are times when I could give him a good scalp round the ear if he was 30 years younger. <laughs> well, I don't think he'd take very kindly to me doing that. But, you know, I really thought that if I stopped doing things for him and let you take over, then he would come to depend on you. Whatever else Dougal is, Mrs. Lachlan, he's not daft. He sees right through us, you know, like glass. <gasps> the only time it nearly worked was when you went away and he had to look after himself for a while. He very nearly proposed to me then. Oh, well, if that's the case, there's only one thing for it. I'll just have to make sure that he's left on his own to look after himself again. <laughs> Hello, Blair Store. Jimmy, we expected you back for lunch ages. Oh, my God, wh when? Uh, and who, who was it? Well, uh, how soon do you think you'll get back? Yes, yes, of course, I'll easily do that, uh-huh. Oh, no, H how did she take it? Yes, of course. All right, then, dearie, we'll, we'll see you later. What's wrong? There's been an accident on the loch. Who is it? It's, it's nobody we know. Somebody out sailing. <sighs> Jimmy fished him out of the water. Is it bad? He's dead. Jimmy had to take the body to Ochtar, and that was him phoning from the police station. He was asking if I'd put the word round, you know, in case any other parents oh. are upset. You know how quickly these rumours circulate. Oh, well, it's just as well that wee Marion wasn't with me. That's just the trouble, she was. She was in the boat when Jimmy pulled the body out of the water. All right, if you could get these off sometime this afternoon, Lorna. In the usual format. Yes, of course, Mrs Cunningham. Hello, Mr. Campbell. Miss Seaton and Mrs. Cunningham. Mr. Campbell. I got a bit behind with my rent. That should see me up to date. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I'll mark your rent book. Uh, you'd better count it. I don't think that'll be necessary. I'd rather you did. Mr. Campbell, I... I don't mean to pry, but... But it's not like you to fall behind with your rent. No, it's not, and I don't like it any more than you do. I, I didn't mean to... It's just that I wondered if perhaps you're having some difficulty. No concern of yours, unless I don't pay at all. Ah, oh, but 
I think it is my concern if one of my tenants is in difficulty, I might be able to help. Mrs. Cunningham, I am 75, and I've got by all my life without taking charity from anyone. I don't intend starting now. I've uh, marked up your book, Mr. Campbell. Good day to you. Mr. Campbell. That's me told. It wasn't always like that, Mrs. Cunningham. No, I know. My father had a very high regard for John Campbell. Hello, Mrs. Blair. Sheila. I heard about the accident on the loch. Jimmy was very brave going in after him. Yes. Mrs. Blair. Something special you're wanting, Sheila? I caused you a lot of trouble, didn't I? Yes, you did. I wanted to say I was sorry. Well, you've taken long enough to get round to it. I didn't mean to do what I did. Oh, really? You accused my son of getting you pregnant when you knew perfectly well it was nothing to do with him. I just didn't know what else to do, Mrs Blair. I knew it was Eddie, I just didn't want it to be him. And there wasn't even anyone I could talk to about it. Couldn't you have talked to your folks about it? Oh, you know I couldn't. You saw what Dad was like when you thought it was Jimmy. I just couldn't have told him it was Eddie Ramsey. And Mum, well, we're just in different wavelengths. You put us all through a very bad time, Sheila. But... I can see it must have been terrible for you too. I don't know what I'd have done if I'd found myself in your position at your age. I know how my folks would have felt about it. Still, at least everybody's had a few months to get used to the idea. Things can only get better. That's just it. The not. I only think things are worse. I brought shame on the family and unmarried mother. They don't seem to care about me or the baby. Only their good name. Oh, no, I'm sure that's not true. Mum wants me to marry Eddie, make it respectable. But Dad, he won't hear of it. His daughter married to the son of the village drunk. I, but what about you? What do you want? I wish I knew. And Eddie? Oh, he wants me to marry him. But there's nothing there, Mrs. Blair. Nothing between us except for what happened. And that's no good reason for tying yourself to someone for life, is it? No, no, it's not. But you've got the baby to think about as well now, Sheila, not just yourself. I don't care about the baby. I don't feel anything for it. Oh, Sheila, you must never think like that about your own child. You wait. I was looking for Brian, Mrs. Blair. I have through the back shop, Eddie. Is it all right if I go through? Ah, of course. I'll just go in then. Hello, Sheila. Eddie. Thanks, Mrs. Blair. Oh, for what? Well, it helps. Having someone to talk to. Bye. -bye. I'll be with you in a minute, Eddie. Oh, look, I'm sorry, you're busy. I'll come again. Now, come away in, come away in. Sit down, lad. It's all right. It's all right. I got to with the break anyway. <clears throat> Was there uh, somebody interesting out in the shop? Sheila. Sheila. Ha. 
Is she what's on your mind? That obvious, is it? Well, it's obvious that you're not very happy. She won't marry me. Ah. Do you want to marry her? It's what I should do. Why? Because you genuinely feel something for her, or because she's having your child? I don't know. It's not easy to separate the two. I felt something oh, for her. Eddie, Eddie, we, we all do things on the spur of the moment, all for the wrong reasons. And some of us have more reason to regret it afterwards than others. But what you did, uh, that was so final. At least I can do something to help Sheila, to make up for all the trouble I got her into. Yeah, except the, uh, the sort of trouble she's in, Eddie. All it takes two. Anyway, what, what sort of marriage would it be for you? I don't matter in this. <laughs> well, that's an attitude you may live to regret. And what would marrying you do for her? Give her back her good name. Good name. And a good name is worth destroying two young lives, eh? Marrying even though they don't love each other. Oh, after my experiences in the past year, I don't think I believe in love anymore. Oh. That's something for romantics, people in books. Not real people. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, you are so wrong. So what about the kid? Uh-huh. Well, that's what's really worrying you, isn't it? It won't have a chance. Just like I didn't. And you think that you can give it that chance? Eddie, she might be better off with her parents. At least they can support her and the kid. Oh, no, but Eddie, I... you've got nothing to offer. You can't make things any better. Try not to make them any worse. You know, I'm taking you to the sheepdog trials tomorrow, eh? Eh? Oh, and it'll not be so long before you'll be taking part yourself. Eh? <laughs> Aye, so you just have a good look at the opposition. That's what to do. Aye? Because we don't want you just taking part, do we? We want you to win, don't we? <laughs> Talking to yourself again, Dougal. Eh, you shouldn't go creeping up on folk like that, Bob Taylor. I didn't creep up. It's just you were too deep in conversation to notice. Yeah. Anyway, they say it's the first sign of madness, talking to yourself. I wasn't talking to myself. I was oh. talking to Tav. Oh, and I suppose she was talking back to you. Ah, away and don't be daft. Mind you, she's the only female I know that doesn't talk back. Oh, but... aye. Having women trouble again, eh? Yeah. yeah. Women are all right for some things. But God made an awful mistake when he put them together, you know. He put tongues in their heads, and guys sharp ones at that. Oh, aye. And you've been getting the edge of them, eh? Sure. Oh, when do I not? Here, I was meaning to ask you to bring wee Donald down to the croft tonight. Tonight? Aye. Well, I haven't had much chance to see him lately. And I'd like to have a, a word or two with him. I just want to put him straight on a few things. Like what? Well, I'd like to make sure that he's getting the right ideas. See, if he doesn't get them early enough, he could end up in bad trouble when he grows up. This religion you're talking about, do you're best sending the boy to Sunday school. I'm not talking about the religion. What then? I just don't want him growing up to be a water bailiff instead of a crofter. Well, I don't know if Alice will be too keen on taking the boy out after he's had his tea. Well, in that case, you'll all better come down for your tea to the croft. Well, that wouldn't be fair on your mother, Dougal. Oh, it's not mother that'll be making it. It's Morag. You see, the two of them have got the notion that if I get used to Morag's cooking, then I'll marry her. Well, you know what they say about food being the way to a man's heart? Oh, not this one. Uh. Mind you, I don't think that she's a bad cook. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be pleased to hear it. Oh, but I haven't told her that. And I'm not going to either. But well, if I did, she might start overrating herself. I thought you should have a look at it. Well, certainly not the kind of application I'd expect for a rental on the Dara house. Hmm. I think I'd like to know a little more about this man than his lawyer seems prepared to reveal. Oh, well, do you want me to? Glendarrick oh. Estate. Marion. What's happened? Yes, yes, of course I can. 
<laughs> you can tell me about it when you get back. The important thing is that you're all right. I'll see you very soon. What happened? There's been a fatal accident on the lock. Who? Well, uh, a tourist, I think. Marion saw it happen. She sounded pretty shaken. Good heavens. Poor uh, girl. I'd like to get home before she does. Yes, of course, Lorna. Uh, give me a ring later. Let me know how she is. I'll do that, thanks. Oh, what about the dower house? Oh, leave that with me for the moment. Off you go. No, that's just right. Thanks again, Mrs. Thank Johnson. Thank you. Bye-bye, now. Bye-bye. Uh, you clock watching again? Oh, I just had expected Jimmy back before now. Ah, stop worrying, Isabel. He's big enough to cope. His phone call proved that. It's not really Jimmy I'm worried about. I just wish Marion hadn't been with him. She's a sensible girl. She'll be okay. Hmm. What was uh, Eddie wanting earlier? Mm hmm. Ah, oh, just a friendly ear, I think. The boy's in an awful state about Sheila and the baby. He needed someone to talk to. That's funny. I had Sheila in here wanting exactly the same thing. Sheila? Mm -hmm. I would have thought you'd be the last person she'd come to. After everything that happened. Well, she says she can't talk to her parents. And I suppose, in spite of everything, I can understand a little bit why she would involve Jimmy. That's your trouble, Isabel. You are too understanding. She's got nobody else, the girl. Both her parents want different things. She's terribly mixed up. I'm just afraid she's going to end up hating that baby. Mm. It's ironic, isn't it? I think it's the baby that Eddie's most concerned about. Is that why he wants to marry her? Oh, that a sense of guilt. I think he feels by marrying her, he's going to put everything right, which, of course, he won't. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, what you told him? Yep. Mm -hmm. Was I wrong? No, no, no. Wondering if it was your place to give him that kind of advice. Well, do you think he'd get it from his father? No. No, I don't suppose he would. Well, I think we owe him something, Isabel. I mean, he didn't have to come back here and own up to being the father. And I don't think Sheila would have admitted it. Jimmy would have had the stigma of that hanging over him for years. You know what your trouble is, Brian? You're too understanding. <laughs> Jimmy. Hi, Brian. I didn't know you were back yet. You two all right? Fine. Marion. Oh, yes, I'm OK. Well, I didn't do anything. It was Jimmy that went in the water after him. Oh, come away, you little lassie. Sit down. There you go. Okay. Now, what happened? Well, it was this guy in a wee sailing dinghy, capsized, got caught in the lines, had to go down and try and free him. Jimmy, you could have got caught in the lines yourself. Do they know who it was yet? No. No, the police are checking all the hotels and bed and breakfast places around just now. Poor man. If you'd a family with them, they won't know anything about it, you know. Look, I'm going to have to go home now, all right? I told Mum on the phone I'd go straight there. You'll be okay. I'll walk you no, back. No, I'm fine, honestly. I'll see you all later, okay? I'll get the door, Lassie. <sighs> she is badly shaken up. She was great. Poor Lassie. The worst part of the whole thing was crossing the loch to the boat, not knowing whether we were going to be in time or not. I mean, that ferry was never designed for speed. Well, couldn't you have taken the speedboat? It was down the other end of the loch with a water skier. <sighs> what we really need on the loch is a lifeboat. Would have meant all the difference between that man being dead or alive right now. Marion? No, it's just me. You're back early? I didn't go into my work today. Why? Oh, never mind that. I went over to Octan to speak to one or two people. Have you seen this? What is it? Well, it could mean a job. But you've got a job, Ken. Yes, in Octan, but this could be a job in Glendarach. Working for who? The estate. Well, Ken, there aren't any jobs on the estate. Not at the moment, but there could be. I have a proposition to put to Mrs Cunningham. What kind of proposition? It's all here in the article. It could mean jobs for more than me, as well as making the estate a lot of money. Will it cost money? Initially, yes. But it'll pay for itself. It'll be into profit in no time. Well, hold on a minute. Well, it might be a very good idea, Ken, but well, right at this moment, I doubt very much if Mrs Cunningham would be prepared to raise any more capital. But if it's that good an idea, it might be worth a try. Marion, are you all right? Oh, no, it's been awful. I tried to be brave for Jimmy's sake. What's happened? Oh, I've never seen a dead body before. It's 
just horrible. I'm never going through that again, Dad. I'm going to have to do something about getting a lifeboat on the loch. Oh, come on. You've got nothing to feel guilty about. You did your best. The lifeboat wouldn't have made all that much difference anyway. Yes, it would. The ferry was slow to start and slow to get there. Oh, be reasonable. A lifeboat would cost a great deal of money. Who'd pay for it? I don't know. The RNLI. They put out money for lifeboats, don't they? Well, maybe they do, but money's scarce right now. Now, they'd be bound to be a dozen places ahead of Loch Darach on the priority list. Hey, you did all right, son. Here, I'll do that. You go and sit down. The I doctor see. told you to rest. Oh, my goodness, here's Bob and Alice with the wee one. Oh. Hello there. Hello. Hello, Hello Alice. Hello, Alice. Hello yes, Laura. Hiding? Uh, not in yet. I, I wasn't expecting you'd laugh to tea. But Dougal invited us for our tea. He would? Aye. You mean he didn't tell you? No, he didn't. You sure you got it right, Bob? Absolutely certain. Well, obviously not expected. Look, we'll, we'll come down again after Not that. at all, you do not. Ah, you're here. That's good. Hey, what's for tea, Morag? Well, there's nothing for you. At least, not to have fed the guests you invited and forgot to tell us about. You can always go up to their own house yes. and make their own Not yes. at all, man, not at all. I asked you, didn't I? And I'm sure there's plenty in the pot for us all. No, there's not. Well, you can just rustle up something else. Doesn't have to be anything special. Not that it would be, I don't suppose. Right. That's it. I've had more than enough of you, Dougal, laughing. If you're such an expert at cooking, you can cook for yourself from now on, for I'll not be doing it for you. And as for this understanding you and I are supposed to have, well, you can stick it in your pipe and smoke it, for I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. If I were the last man on earth, you'd have to join the queue. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! Nice one, Dougal. Well, maybe that'll teach her and mother to go scheming to get me married off. And anyway, she doesn't mean it. Oh, but I wouldn't be too sure of that. Uh.